Well guys, guess what? It's time for another episode of As the Stomach Turns and the Saga of the House Continues. You know what, today we did a lot of stuff, but before today we actually got all the sheetrock done uh, in the living room, got the wall built, got the sheetrock done, and we scraped the ceiling this morning. Now, that's pretty important because we're gonna change up the texture for the ceiling. But before I show you that and I talk about it, let's look at this. There was something else that we did. My wife took up all the uh, tile in this area. And then this morning I took uh, our new tool, our hammer drill, uh, and chiseled off all the thin set and everything. But there's an issue. This right here, this is tar base. That's no bueno, not good. Uh, so what we're going to have to do is I'm going to have to use a solvent and pull up as much of that as I can and then put some kind of a, well, kind of like a, it's like a glue, but it helps your thin set stick to it. So we'll deal with that when it comes time for that. But today we're going to do the ceiling. Now, if you'll look right here, what I'm using is actually a texture roller and just mud. Now, I would recommend that you get you like a paint strainer uh, for your bucket. I can't find mine, imagine that. And you're gonna want a fairly decent sized trowel, you know, 12 inch something, 10 inch, 12 inch. And you're gonna want something to catch it in. Now, the reason I'm doing this is because I don't want to put another layer of sheetrock on this ceiling and I want to change the way it looks. I want to redo all of these ceilings from here on out. So what we have chosen to do is we have chosen to start doing this. You just roll the texture on and then you smooth it out. Now you're going to have lines your first time and you're going to want to sand it. This is not for the faint at heart. This is kind of labor intensive, but it is cost effective. So if you're like me and there's, you know, several inches of snow outside and you don't have nothing else to do, or you're just cheap, well, we can get it done like this. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna continue on. I'm gonna set you up on the tripod and let you just watch. Stick around. All right, so here's what we're gonna do. We're just gonna load up a bunch of texture on here. Normally I would roll it off. Flick a little bit of the extra off. And this is messy. I'm just gonna tell you guys, this is messy. I'll give you another tip. Don't roll fast, because the faster you roll, the more you sling off. So. I don't have it mixed super thin. And I might could have gone a little thinner. Now studies have shown that a three foot by three foot is the optimal. No, I'm not gonna tell you that. You do as much as you want. Whatever you feel you're comfortable with and how much you can actually cover. tell you this, you're not going to save this mud. And don't drag. Don't drag with a heavy hand. Okay? You're trying to fill the holes, not smash everything out of them. So, now make sure you don't have any junk on your walls. Continue on. Now, like I said, you're not gonna save this mud, but waste not, won't not. Oop. All right, I'm gonna put in some headphones. I'm just gonna get on, start going. Uh, and I'll catch you back here in a minute.
So it's been right at an hour since I first started filming today. So this is what it, it's time consuming. It really is. But I'm gonna go ahead, I'm gonna cut y'all off and then I'll bring you back whenever I start the second coat and uh, show you the difference. So already it looks much better. Be right back. So I showed you how I was doing the first coat. The first coat went on, I put it on with a roller and that was mostly because I didn't want to hold this up. It takes a lot of mud on that first coat, but second coat takes a lot of mud too. Now I want to tell you, I'm not using general purpose mud. I am actually using lightweight uh, joint compound for this. Uh, it's uh, USG plus and uh, it's less shrinkage, so I just thought I'd show you how I do it. Now on the first uh, round, what I probably didn't explain is that I drug everything this way as my final drag. Now this time I'm gonna drag across this way because it left little ridges. I'm sure you can't see that from there, but there's a, there's a, a method to my madness. Now, I just mixed up new mud, and that's when I thought about y'all. I thought, oh, I should tell y'all. So, I'm doing it in strips. Some people do it other ways. I'm not putting on a thick coat, so. And actually, this mud may be a little thick, but we're gonna roll with it for now. If you can see, when you're pulling your mud towards you, if it's making ridges, your mud's too thick. You want it just where it just rolls off, okay? And I'm just sticking some mud up there, pulling it back across, making sure that my corners are wiped off so I don't get a big old glob coming out the side. Now. From there, you probably can't see it, but it left a hole. That's okay. Now you notice I'm not overworking this. There's also, if you're, a, if you're like me and you use the same knife the whole, all the time, you will wear it to where it's got a, like a moon shape to it and I'm putting extra pressure on this side so that I'm not leaving lines. Now, it's as simple as that. When I come back with my next coat, all I'll do is I will, instead of going this way across the room, I will go the other way and pull my final coat like that but I'll make that mud a whole lot thinner. Now, I'm gonna stick on my headphones and I'm not gonna make you watch me. Well, y'all can't make you do anything, but I'm gonna get busy. Finish out this room. Before I do my third coat though, I'm gonna go ahead and take and bed all the rest of it. Anyways, we'll keep you updated. <laughs> 